Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I plan for world domination, we'll cover the sun, Ben says something clever, just quite literally mind-blowing, and I struggle to find Ben. Ben? Starting off the news this week, the James Webb Telescope, which launched a month and a day ago today, has slowly been deploying itself and travelling to its destination. This week, it reached it, a location called the Lagrange Point 2. Sitting at this point will allow the James Webb Telescope to observe the universe around a million miles away from Earth, and uninterrupted by direct sunlight, as the Earth will cover the sun for the telescope. Unfortunately, the telescope isn't ready to start its work just yet. It's still got many months to go before it is fully online and can properly begin its mission. And in the paleontology news for this week, we've also got a paper naming a new genus and species of an antiornithine bird from the Lower Cretaceous of Inner Mongolia. This is actually the first ever in antiornithine to be found from this particular formation, as well as the first Mesozoic dinosaur to be named this year, and is called Biguornis kinganensis. Various anatomical similarities were observed with other members of this bird group, enabling it to be grouped with two other already named taxa. The study explains how this discovery enriches the fauna of the known biota in this area, as well as increasing the overall diversity and geographic range of these enantiornithines. And finally is a really interesting study by paleontologists Julian Benoit and colleagues looking at the neurovascular system of the jaws of Tyrannosaurus rex. The paper explains how the network of internal canals that run through the snout of T. rex haven't actually received much attention in the past, even though their anatomy can potentially tell us a lot about features such as the presence or absence of lips in this animal. This paper therefore uses data from CT scanning and comparisons with other dinosaurs to investigate these structures in the tyrant lizard king itself, finding that, like the theropod neovenator, which has had these structures investigated in detail before, T. rex had a canal in its upper jaw that branched and rejoined at various points along its length. They also found that T. rex has a more specialised condition in this canal compared to other reptiles, being displaced upwards to allow more room for the large teeth to be anchored. This therefore also resulted in the branches that innovate and supply blood to the skin being elongated and there being multiple rows of small holes, foramina, in the bone of the maxilla. The paper also explains how a literature review does not support the idea that non-bird theropods had crocodilian-like sensitive tactile skin on their snouts, except potentially in semi-aquatic species such as Spinosaurus, and that therefore the possibility of lips is still very much open. And so, the debate rages on. In other news... Uh, ben? Back to Dog in the Studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.